This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Sophie Morris. The limit on public gatherings is set to increase from 10 to 100 this week. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern announced this afternoon that from noon on Friday, gatherings of up to 100 people will be allowed, meaning religious services can resume and the 50-person limit on funerals and tangi will be lifted. Weddings will also be able to have up to 100 people attend. Physical distancing rules will still apply. Community sport will also benefit from the changes. The Prime Minister also said the government will look at whether the country will be ready to move to Level 1 in June and has marked a June 22, four weeks from today, as a date to be considered to move to Level 1. Several tourists are visiting Dunedin's Freedom Camping sites as they restart their journeys across New Zealand. Like everyone else, they've had to stay put for a month until COVID-19 restrictions have eased. Lisa Galuso and her travelling companion are freedom camping at Dunedin's Ocean View Recreation Reserve, having resumed their New Zealand road trip after being locked down in Hokitika, where they ended up renting an apartment for seven weeks. Well, it wasn't too bad because uh, anyway we, we were nice and close to the beach so we could actually go for a walk over there and yeah, there were a few trucks as well so we weren't really stuck in an apartment. But mm -hmm. The pair say they never had any doubts about remaining in New Zealand during lockdown and were glad to be somewhere safer than their home country of Italy. We couldn't leave actually because in Italy the situation was much worse oh. than, <laughs> yeah. than here so we couldn't go back to Italy or back home anyway so we only had this option but I think it was the best one because we were safer here than mm. home. So. They're planning on spending the next few months in an apartment in Queenstown before hopefully jetting back to Italy in August. Yeah, we keep going for a little while with the van and then we have rented an apartment in Queenstown for the winter time. In Dunedin, the South today. Almost 90 jobs will be lost as the Invercargill Licensing Trust looks to cut costs during the fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic. 87 of ILT's 606 workforce will be made redundant due to the impact on the hospitality sector. In a statement released today, ILT Chief Executive Chris Ramsey said the business was unable to retain its full quota of staff in the current economic environment. Mr Ramsey says without any, with any recovery predicted to take a significant amount of time, the overall commercial sustainability of the organisation was paramount. The ILT has a monopoly on, the, on premises in Invercargill, licensed to sell alcoholic beverages and operates more than 20 businesses in the hospitality sector. For the last seven years, a group of young women in Southland have been getting together at the start of every duck shooting season. While their Mai Mai, which is restricted to ladies only, bags a good number of ducks every year, they say it's more about the camaraderie and taking care of each other. The Hen House is a girls only Mai Mai in Balfour, where this group of young Southland women have been getting together each duck hunting season for the last seven years. We sort of grew up, grew up with duck shooting around us and then we decided that we wanted to get together as a group of girls and um, give the boys a run for their money. <laughs> Only about half the ladies attending the hen house Mai Mai have firearms licences. But there's plenty of other things to do than just shooting. Well, there's probably half of us shoot and the other half is sort of a support crew and then, yeah. then yeah. Yeah. eventually... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bacon butty makers. Nationally, less than 10% of duck shooting licences are issued to women. But Jess Turnbull says there's no reason why women can't go duck hunting. It's just fun for anyone. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter who you are. What sex you are, it's just a good time. Yeah. yeah. Yep. The Girls Only Mai Mai was built with the help and encouragement of local menfolk, including Jamie Edwards' late husband, Liam Edwards, who died four years ago in a helicopter crash near Athol. I started duck shooting with him, yeah, mm -hmm. before I came to this Mai Mai, and that's where most of the encouragement sort of came from. When I um, shot a duck, he'd be like, yeah, Cheryl, 
Get into it. <laughs> and he had us he had us dig it in here cleaning out the yes. pond for us and we competed with them. Yes. And we and we did compete with them. Yes. yes and we, we did. beat them. And we easily yeah. <laughs> beat them most years yeah. every yeah. year. So they were at, they were a competition. And while the girls regularly beat the neighbouring boys with number of ducks bagged, it's more about the camaraderie and taking care of each other. We scrub up the my my and put in a bit of effort and then try and keep everyone quiet for the first couple of hours. It's probably the hardest bit. Yeah. <laughs> this year's duck shooting season across the whole South Island is set to run until 26th July. In Southland, the South today. Dunedin motorists have been warned to expect delays on the city's northern motorway this week. The NZ Transport Agency will remove a stretch of pine trees from the side of State Highway 1 because they are at risk of falling. The work to remove the trees at the northern end of the Kilmog Hill, about 20 kilometres north of Dunedin, will begin on Wednesday and could take up to three days. Contractors will be on site between 7am and 4pm each day and road users should build in a five minute delay across these days, says the NZTA. The work is weather dependent and if it continues to rain this week it may be delayed. Still to come on the south today, Dunedin chocolate manufacturer Ocho has been hit hard by the fallout of COVID-19 and redundancies and restructuring are now a reality for many businesses in Tiano. hasn't been much of a summer, has it? Until now, it's hot, it's getting warm, it's great. This is the time of year we love this weather. So we have a lot of surplus stock and we want to clear it at real hot prices. 50% off anything that's short sleeve. T-shirts, short sleeve shirts, polos, everything short sleeve, half price. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. At Alex Campbell menswear, get them while it's hot. Step into Shop on Carroll and discover a shop full of treasures. We have a fantastic range of vintage and retro clothes, upmarket clothing labels, collectible items, beautiful jewellery, quality linen and the best range of vintage haberdashery. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Do you know Youth Grow in Northeast Valley? It's an awesome plant nursery where young people can work and learn life skills. You can now order your vegetable seedlings, herbs, bulbs and shrubs over the phone or by email. Either pick up your order on Norwood Street in North East Valley or they can deliver to you. Look for Youth Grow Garden Centre on Facebook or visit youthgrow.org.nz. Happy gardening! Wrens are Otago's painting, tiling and plastering experts. Offering a free measure and quote, Wrens is a name you can trust to get the job done right. Call Wrens today on 477-9384 or visit wrens.co.nz. Heaven Sent Pet Cremations knows that losing a pet is like losing a family member. And we have many special ways for you to keep their memory dear to your heart. From caskets, remembrance pendants to remembrance spheres. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today. Welcome back. Dunedin chocolate manufacturer Ocho has been hit hard by the fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic. Acting Managing Director Jim O'Malley told the Otago Daily Times before the outbreak the company had been predicting its first profitable year, but the effect of the pandemic has been quite extreme. Tours and sales from the factory shop had been hit hard and a large chunk of its retailers had also been badly affected. The company is now forecasting sales for the upcoming year of $570,000 and a projected loss of $230,000. Its pre-COVID forecast was just under $1 million. That forced a restructure and all remaining staff were now on a four-day week. 
Redundancies and restructuring are now a reality for many businesses in Tiano. Even before the COVID-19 pandemic, tourist ventures were feeling the pinch after flooding in February closed the Milford Road for several weeks. Even though Tiano, seen here in file footage from last summer, has never been bustling with tourists such as neighbouring Queenstown or Wanaka, local business managers say the town is still likely to be seriously affected by COVID-19. It's fair to say that tourism sustains Tiano, Manapouri, Milford Sound in terms of jobs. Um, we will become more like a little rural town. Tiano's tourism has been hit twice this year. First when floods closed a major tourist road to Milford Sound for several weeks in February, and more recently COVID-19. Destination Fjordland manager Madeline Peacock is concerned how some tourist ventures will cope. Uh, some smaller businesses are probably finding it a little bit easier to be nimble and um, to downsize without having to go through full restructure processes. Um, but yeah, we are seeing our big players really having to um, very, very seriously consider how they continue to um, be viable. Fjordland Jet co-owner Chris Adams restarted boat trips a week ago and he's hoping to attract business junkets from across the country. No one actually owes us a living. Um, it's up to us to try and see what we can do to keep going. The wage subsidy is a huge help to keep the staff on. Um, so we need to get out there and, and say Tiana is open for business, the accommodation is going to be cheap. Um, the big thing we're going to try and aim for is um, work dues and corporate functions. You know, if you're going to have your work do or incentive groups out of Auckland or Wellington or that that have often gone overseas, come down to come down to Tiana, spend a few days here, go into Milford, come on a jet boat with us. The government's planning to spend nearly $14 million on repairing conservation and visitor infrastructure destroyed by February's floods in Fiordland, with the route burn and Milford track set to be open in time for summer. In Tiano, the South today. After the break on the South today, Queenstown has emerged as a possible venue for heavyweight boxer Joseph Parker's next bout, and we check out tomorrow's weather. Well, mate, I'm thinking about getting a new ute. Do you know Youth Grow in Northeast Valley? It's an awesome plant nursery where young people can work and learn life skills. You can now order your vegetable seedlings, herbs, bulbs, and shrubs over the phone or by email. Either pick up your order on Norwood Street in Northeast Valley, or they can deliver to you. Look for Youth Grow Garden Centre on Facebook or visit youthgrow.org.nz. Happy gardening! Step into Ross Cafe, located at Ross Home in North East Valley. We have a great range of hot and cold food, friendly service and a warm atmosphere that you are sure to enjoy. We look forward to serving you soon at Ross Cafe. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Heaven Sent Pet Cremations knows that losing a pet is like losing a family member. And we have many special ways for you to keep their memory dear to your heart. From caskets, remembrance pendants, to remembrance spheres. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality, stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 17 years. New doors, replacement doors and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team. You've seen us in the street, now find us online. Check out shopon.org.nz.
We have all sorts of treasures, from retro and vintage clothing to antiques, homewares and accessories. New items added every week. We're open 24-7. Welcome back. Queenstown has emerged as a possible venue for heavyweight boxer Joseph Parker's next bout. Parker, the former WBO heavyweight title holder, was in the resort town last week taking in the sights while his management team met local officials. Parker's manager David Higgins says it was a good chance a fight will be staged in New Zealand as it's one of the very few places in the world a bout might be permitted due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Auckland, Rotorua and Wellington are other possible venues being considered, but Queenstown Lakes Mayor Jim Bolt says he's convinced the resort town has a strong case. We continue with bringing you this year's ASB Otago Sports Awards. The winner of the Otago Community Trust Coach of the Year is swimming coach Lars Humer. Lars Humer says receiving this year's award is a reflection of the swim program he's set up in Dunedin and the cooperation between the various aquatic organisations. We're very thankful to the clubs for supporting our program and working with us and also to, to people like Swimming Otago who provide the events and the competitions and do a lot of coordinating and developing behind the scenes. To Moana Pool and the Council which you know we use their facility a lot and uh, and we're very, very thankful for that. And in particular to my board uh, at Swim Dunedin and to the staff and the coaches who I couldn't be the figurehead or do what I do in terms of whether it's going away to internationals or being on deck coaching and the support I get from all of those uh, associate coaches. Part of his coaching role has seen the success of local swimmer Erica Fairweather. Humer says it's very important for young swimmers to be enjoying their training. It is important for us as coaches to be able to make sure that we're doing well at swimming but also be able to um, facilitate it in, in an enjoyable manner. And I think the swimmers also do a really good job at that in terms of their friendships and the way that they uh, interact is a very important part of that as well. So again, whilst I might be in a leadership role, Part of that leadership is allowing people to express themselves and be themselves and, and they almost lead me at times as to what they want to do that makes them want to come swimming. While Erica Fairweather may represent New Zealand at next year's Olympics, Humer says she's very much part of the local swim squad. So Erica and all the swimmers, going forward we just need to be skill masters. We need to be better at those skills. We need to keep turning up to training consistently, regularly. We have lots of different terms we would use, swimming with no splash. So we're, you know, we're, we're becoming efficient, swimming smoother. And that, and that rolls into lifestyle as well, in terms of having smooth, no splash lifestyle, going to bed at a good time, eating the right food, being nice to other people, remembering that mum and dad pay the bills and provide the food and the rides to the pool, all those things. So everyone's in that same boat together. In Dunedin, the South today. And time now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome, Barry. Sophie, how are you? Good, Good. to be back. Yeah. Um, well, I haven't been away, but you've been away, I think. So, um, so it's good to be uh, back on deck. Um, the debate in, in, in the period has been... Uh, George Street and, and, and what's happening with that. So the Dunedin City Council are meeting as we speak and we'll have a comprehensive report on any decisions from that in the ODT tomorrow. So uh, there's much interest in that as to uh, mm. uh, what is going to be debated uh, uh, about that. So uh, in other, other news, the Principal of Mount Aspiring uh, College in Wanaka has uh, resigned uh, following a little controversy earlier uh, there. Uh, and of course we have the latest from the COVID-19 front and uh, no new cases today so that's what three days in a row I think so that's uh, great news uh, and uh, the Prime Minister announced uh, easing of some of the restrictions so uh, from uh, midday Friday the limits for uh, crowd gathering at, at, um, at church services and uh, and, and funerals be increased to 100, so, so that's a, a really positive result from that, so uh, that's good news. 
Uh, and of course the Cabinet will meet on June 22 uh, to, decide, to decide if we are ready to, to move into Level 1. Quite what Level 1 means I'm not entirely sure, but um, uh, I'm sure we're on that, um, on that flight of uh, progression. So, uh, so fingers crossed we, uh, we stay the course and, uh, and uh, keep washing our hands and um, do our bit. Yeah. Um, so big changes in politics uh, with uh, the new National Party leader, of course, and uh, uh, Todd Muller announced his, uh, his line-up today. Simon Bridges is uh, in the line-up, while Dunedin's uh, Michael Woodhouse has kept his, uh, his health health role and his, uh, and his standing at, at possibly number seven in the list, although he didn't uh, number that list. Um, Play Centre New Zealand is believed to be uh, shutting down 100 centres uh, and uh, this could have um, a severe effect on rural centres, so, so that's uh, uh, disappointing news there. Mm. Um, not much to, to talk about in sports, so that's probably me for the moment. Right, well thank you Barry, thank you. all of that and more in tomorrow's ODT. And time now for a look at tomorrow's weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by MolMap. Looking at the situation, a ridge of high pressure is set to spread over southern districts tomorrow and bring fine cold weather for a few days with inland frost and scattered coastal clouds. Looking at the southern towns, Catlins, Balclutha, Lumsden and Gore can all expect fine weather with light winds and a high of 11 degrees. Travelling westwards to the central lakes, Wanaka and Queenstown are in for fine weather with light winds and a high of 11 degrees. Similar in Alexandra and Tiano with light winds and a high of 12. Looking at the northern towns, Mamarama and Twizel can expect fine weather with light winds and a high of 12. Similar along the coast where Timaru and Oamaru are in for light southwesterlies, some clouds and a high of 12 degrees. In Dunedin it should be cloudy tonight with an overnight low of 8. It will be mostly cloudy tomorrow with a few sunny periods developing during the afternoon along with moderate southwesterly winds and cold temperatures. A high of 12 and a low of 5. Expect similar weather on Wednesday with it being mostly cloudy and cold with light southwesterlies. A high of 12 and a low of 7 degrees. And in Invercargill, it will be mostly cloudy tonight with an overnight low of 3. Tomorrow sees cloud clearing and long sunny periods developing with cold southerly winds dying out. A high of 11 and a low of 0 degrees. And Wednesday starts with morning frost, followed by clear skies, sunshine and light winds, a high of 13 and an overnight low of zero. That's all for our news this Monday. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz or follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.